Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.wordpress.com back again here with another Ferrero Friday project and this time it's my version of the envelope punch board diamond gift box which I've seen round about lots of times but I've always felt it's a little bit awkward to get things in and out of. So what I've done is I've done my version so that you can open it on the top there with a, just a, a, a simple hinge lid and of course being Friday it fits for Ferrero. Well, you might, yeah, I don't think you'd quite get a fifth one in there. Um, or Lindor or Raffaello or any other chocolates that you might, or a nice little gift, maybe a scarf might just about fit in there, perhaps a silk one. But as I say, there you go, for Ferrero, fit in there nicely and then that just ties with a bit of ribbon and I am using some of the beautiful new Falling in Love uh, designer series paper which um, is a mixture of some very vanilla and Sahara sand and um, coordinates with lo the lovely soft sky which I've got here. It also coordinates with Blushing Bride. So what you need um, to um, make the project today is two pieces of five by five cardstock I've then cut a further piece using the largest of the la stitched um, framelits, uh, which are which where you've got circles over. So obviously, if you haven't got the stitched ones, then you could just cut yourself um, a square as well. But you, w I do find that although normally I just cut squares, if you're going to make apertures, you I find framelits are invaluable. So use the largest one for. Um, for, for, for that and you'll need the next size down as well in a moment and then just a couple of pieces of, of very vanilla and some more of the DSP. So to make the box then um, you'll need your envelope punch board and you'll also need your trimmer as well um, and it's very simple so it's five inches by five inches so it's a square so you could make this using um, I would actually go for seven by seven centimeters just to make it easier to get the middle point um, and then I'm going to punch and score at two and a half or if I was doing it in centimeters I would punch and score at 3.5 centimeters so um, sorry I'd make it I'd punch and score at seven centimeters so I'd make it 14 centimeters so I'm doing it in inches five by five two and a half by, um, punch and then score and then you're going to repeat that on all four sides so just line up and score on each one uh, and obviously you can either follow the line round hopefully you can see that but when you're doing a square um, obviously you, you, you can just line it up on uh, on the four sides. So do the same on your second piece. Okay, and then you can pop your envelope punch board away for the moment until you make your next one. And next you're going to need your um, trimmer. Um, I will work out the measurements totally in centimetres for you um, because I'll double check the measurements here but if you're going to work in inches you're going to score on all four sides on one piece at three eighths of an inch so you'll see that's just coming to the edge of, of that punch like so. So you do that on one piece and on the other piece now that you've got your diagonals you're actually going to trim those pieces off. Now you could leave them on um, and then join the tabs together um, but I find that when you do that it makes it quite bulky and can make it a little bit awkward um, to do so I found that this method worked best for me. So having trimmed those you've now got two pieces of cardstock, one with tabs on, one without. So if you take your bone folder and just reinforce the score lines on all of those. That includes these side ones as well. I'm going to do a little bit of trimming in a moment just to neaten up those corners and make it easy for us to fold. So on each corner, just take your scissors and cut diagonally across on each of the four corners. Okay. 
like so. So this is going to be the base of our box, as you can see here, okay, and the, and the top is, going to, is the one that's going to be trimmed. So what you're going to do is you're going to die cut using the smaller of the squares, so just pop it in the centre there and pop it through your uh, big shot. Uh, I said mine is a, is a larger one, so it is off to one side here. So apologies for the rattling while I do this. But all you need to do is just literally line that up and being a square, it is nice and straightforward to do. And keep your die cut out of the middle because that's going to be used to line your lid. You'll see here. Okay. So that's your um, now going to be your lid. Use the larger one to die cut here, and you just need to score down the edge there to make the flap. And I literally just scored at half an inch. That's to make the hinge. And as always, crease in the direction of your uh, score line first before bringing it back on itself. Okay. So those are the pieces that you should have. Now, in order to make the, um, um, <gasps> oh, lose my words. In order to make the slot for the ribbon, I'm just using a standard craft knife, and um, all I'm doing is just using my grid paper here. Uh, just to line it up and just cut just sort of about a slot and it's going to be covered up by your card so don't don't worry too much if it's not quite straight um, and if you want to you can come in from the reverse and just make that a little bit bigger as well so that's the slot you're going to make on your lid and then you're also going to make one in the front of this triangular panel here. So again, I'm just going to line that up so it's, I can see roughly where the middle is because I'm using this line here. And again, just cut a slit in there like so. Then I'm going to use um, just a strip of ribbon and I'm actually going to use some of the, um, the red tape, which um, unfortunately Stampin' Up! doesn't do it anymore, um, but it is um, readily available from, from your sort of craft supplies. So just take, a, um, take your card and on the reverse, you do this before you make the box up, just pop a strip of tape down below and do the same on the lid. my ribbon. So in which case we we'll use some of the one with the silver in. So this is, a, this is another ribbon that uh, Stampin' Up! are doing at the moment. You just need around about six inches, two pieces about six inches long. You will trim it down. I always think with ribbon it's far better to have that bit more than you need and then uh, be able to trim it away than um, be trying to fiddle around with when, when you haven't got enough. I don't know what I've done with that ribbon. It was here a minute ago, I know it was. So all you're going to do is literally just pop, poke that through that slot there. So pop, I usually find pop the blade through to open, open the slot up and then you should just be able to pop, as you can see, that through and pull it through there. So we do the same on here. Pop the blade through. Wiggle and feed the. It will go through. <laughs> if it needs to be, just use the point. There you go. Point of your craft knife just to poke that through as well. And then once you've put it through, just lay your ribbon down. 
if you've got a little bit of excess just trim that away using your ribbon scissors it's a really good idea to keep a separate pair of scissors just for cutting ribbon cutting card does blunt them over time um, so it's really good to keep uh, keep something um, just for doing that so once you've done the lid all what I'm going to suggest is that you then um, adhere the centre panel that you cut out of your um, out of the centre of, of the top just with some fuse and pop that in like so that just neatens that off and then on the front I've got a layer of designer series paper and this is the new uh, DSP and this falling in um, falling in love is absolutely beautiful. It's uh, got really pretty pink and Sahara sand colours in it, um, and it, it really is a lovely. Uh, got some lovely designs. So on the one side you've kind of got the um, photo, photo, you know, photograph um, effect, and on the reverse you've then got a printed pattern as well. And then to go on the front there, I've cut it. So this square is. Uh, of the DSP for the top is um, two and a quarter by two and a quarter and then this is one and three quarters by one and three quarters which I've used some um, very vanilla for and the reason I've gone for that is because it's just that um, it's those are the colours that are in the background and it just means it, it works out a little bit better um, in terms of the uh, contrast that you get. So to stamp our sentiment I've got this little square here and I've got um, this stamp set which is called Sweet Sentiments and so each of these matches with one of these um, sweets in the new spring catalogue and this one is lovely, the best things in light, life are sweet and there is a sentiment that goes with it that says and so are you and then what I've done is I've just stamped and punched a Papillon Potpourri butterfly on the other one I use the Blossom Builder Punch but I've just put in this butterfly instead just to pick up the butterfly that we've got on the designer series paper and I've left a slightly wider border so you can actually see the DSP on the lid there and while that glue is just setting I'm going to put the DSP on the panels here while it's still flat so what you need is a piece of um, DSP for the side which is two and three quarters by two and three quarters and as I've shown you before once you've cut that if you lay it and hold it with the points lined up in your track without moving it as I just have cut in half diagonally line up the point again and do the same again then you'll have four triangles ready to go on whatever it is that you're decorating. And then all you need to do is just pop a bit of um, tape on the back of those. I've got my fuse to hand here, which I'm managing to stick everywhere. And this is much, much easier to do while the box is still um, unmade. So you, it's not impossible, so if you do accidentally, if you forget and you put, put your, put your um, do make your box up and then you think, oh, I meant to decorate it, that it really doesn't matter. And of course you could just stamp on the side if you didn't have any um, design series paper or you hadn't got a pattern that you really liked. You could, you know, you could always just stamp on these as well, You'd make your own card stop but don't do what I nearly did there and put glue on the wrong side. So that then covers up that slot with the ribbon as you can see. Okay. So now we've got two pieces, one of which is decorated and we can just now, that glue should be set by now so we're just going to pop our panel on the front there. And then to put the box together, on the on the lid here, I'm going to use some very fine um, tape. As I say, um, 
it's one of the few occasions when I will use a red tape but to make the box up you can actually use the Stampin' Up! tear and tape and that's really good for um, this sort of project because it means that you're not battling with glue while you're trying to put sides together. So having taken our tape off all you need to do is just line that up in the centre there. There we go and you can see So, on here, if we get our tear and tape and just pop a small piece on each of the sides. Don't stick it to your finger as I have just done, because otherwise you'll end up with no tape on your cardstock. I was going to. I was filming in the daylight earlier, but then I, I, I was half three quarters of the way through two. Well, one project, and the doorbell went for a delivery I was waiting for, and then a bit later on, I was three quarters through another one, and guess what? The doorbell went for my, for another, for the postman, and then uh, just as I was going to film another project, my battery died on my camera because I'd left it running when I got interrupted, so. Not the greatest day, uh, but still, that's why the light is not perhaps as good as it might be. So take some tape off just a couple of those sides and um, then what you're going to do is line up on here. Now what I found is the best way is to start it on one side so that it's fairly square. Then just work your way around on each of these four corners. The first one, if you can get that nice and square, it will really help. It won't help at all if you glue it in the wrong place. Okay, so here we go, crafting on the go. Never mind, fortunately, I haven't stuck it down. That's a good, as I said, good thing about tear and tape. Is it is a little bit more forgiving. So try again. Right, let's replace that piece of tape. Right, and what you're actually doing is you're fitting it in like so. Okay, so when you line it up, you're lining the middle of this with the middle here. Okay, so you have a piece like so. That makes easier. Right, then you come round and fold this piece in, then just continue round lining up each of those corners. Once you've got the first one, just give it a squeeze. Then the next one, a squeeze, and keep coming round. And then as you get further round, you can then take the tape off. So, and because we're getting towards the end, I'm actually going to take those last few pieces off. Because you don't want to be fiddling on that very last one where it's all stuck in. Okay, so the last three. And you're going to tuck that in, like so. And the last two, I find, Pop in and then from the inside squeeze together. So there you go, one box with a lid that you can pop in for Ferrero Rocher and you use your envelope punch board to make a diamond shaped box but with a top closure and to get your bow to sit straight what I do is I tie it and then just pull together before I tie a bow to finish. Thanks for watching don't forget to shop online in my store and, and it's celebration so you get a free gift for every £45 from the celebration catalogue. Come back again soon bye for now.